Nick Saban. Double nickel. Is going after Alabama basketball coach Nate Oates, who has, uh, and this is not supportive of the Nate Oates experience, to be in an athletic department <laughs> with Nick Saban. And you're the number one seed overall in the tournament, but you also have murder around your program, and you've looked like a bad leader, and the optics beyond the murder of how you've handled that uh, the New York Times reports that four of your players were at this thing. Nate Oates has missed every opportunity to help make this a better public relations scenario for Alabama. And Nick Saban doesn't do a lot of this. He's suspending a player here for something, and he's basically separating himself very with a great deal of distance from his dirty basketball program. Tony Mitchell has been suspended from the team on uh, all team activities until we gather more information about the situation and what his legal circumstance is. And um, everybody's got an opportunity to make choices and decisions. There's no such thing in being at the wrong place at the wrong time. You got to be responsible for who you're with, who you're around, and what you do, who you associate yourself with, and uh, the situations that you put yourself in. So, um, it is what it is, but uh, there is, you know, cause and effect when you make, you know, choices and decisions that uh, put you in bad situations. That was totally intentional from Nick Saban. Mm -hmm. e everything about that was premeditated with purpose. The, the words that he chose were chose with purpose. <laughs> and so that... This is how I handle my business. Well, yeah, the, the wrong place, yeah. wrong time thing. Yeah. Like that's those, what those... Nate Oates, uh, the wrong place, wrong time uh, thing is what everybody heard in the shade of the comments because that was the way that Nate Oates decided, again, to handle murder, a murder charge around his program. Yeah, Saban's, uh, I guess as he's gotten older, he's been a much better quote. Like, he, he uses these opportunities with the media as someone that powerful should to to push forth an agenda. Sometimes he's fallen on the wrong side of it and he's had to apologize directly to other coaches for it, but uh he uses that pulpit with a lot of purpose. I would go a step further on celebrating someone who I have been very critical of because uh, when he came to Miami and tried the professional coaching gig, I beat him up because all of his principles and words about accountability didn't seem to apply to the mirror when it got very difficult in Miami, uncomfortable, and he didn't like it here in the pro ranks, he left. But to me, the most impressive thing that he's done that's somehow even more impressive than the fact that he's won more than any modern coach in college football, the idea that his program doesn't have the problems that plagued USC when they were up there, the contaminants that plagued the University of Miami, that the suspensions, that he is very much in control of something that now is more uncontrollable than it's ever been. The players have legitimate power now. They, they can make a mess of things at the championship level with, uh, with arrests and misbehavior and just college kids stuff. The idea that Alabama somehow is rarely in the news. Florida State had this. Every program that got to the top, Colorado, the one year that they did it, always arrests all over LSU, the place. Uh, almost any program that comes for the king, Nick Saban, and it actually topples him. Has it happened to Georgia? Uh, I mean, there's, yeah, yeah. very recently yeah. there's been stuff around Georgia. It mm -hmm. happened with Florida. Like, usually if a team gets to the point that they're beating Nick Saban. Uh, That's the only way to do it, and it's stunning. I've said this one about. One of the only ways. I, I, LSU had, I, I mean, it was, they were running amok over at LSU. I have said this about Duke, right? It's It strains all credibility to think that somehow everyone in college basketball is cheat, cheating. Wire tra wiretaps reveal that Creighton hundred thousand dollars for a starter but somehow duke is not only dominating but dominating the cheaters by doing it straight like maybe they are maybe that but it's it doesn't Damn. if if i made you bet on probabilities you would say there's no way they could do that clean alabama very much though is winning at a dirty game in a way that feels like he's in control of that program that i think that's the most important thing because it hasn't been without incident but like the the marquee names sticking around the program and and having that as a distraction, that doesn't really happen to to I'm, Nick Saban. They I, deal with it. I mean, they get a you lot think of Saban's it. Saban's given that same quote if it's a quarterback, like one of his best players. I don't know if if he has 
some of his best players ever really be involved with that I, kind of stuff. Uh, see, here's here's the problem, right? Because they're in a town where suppressing stuff is easy. This this uh, incident ta- with Mitch- ta- Tallahassee was that town too, and FSU couldn't suppress it. Like there are a lot of college well, but, towns. But hold on, but Tallahassee's also Miami. Miami Coral Gables was that town with a with a. With people in charge, police chiefing was that town. Well, you know it's my, hard my, to keep my, quiet. That you know stuff. my longstanding theory about it's like all the death penalty programs. They're in major media markets because an entire economy doesn't revolve around SMU, USC, and, and the University of Miami. The entire economy in in the state of Alabama basically yeah. revolves around college football, and that program is the biggest program in that state. So yes, it it should be noted that this stuff happens and. It Oftentimes just, they don't hear about it because there's a lot of influence. There was so much more shit that was happening with the Florida Gators that you never heard of. It, they they do try to yep. suppress the news. Because we just focused on Tebow. Uh, my point is, though, look at what happened at LSU. Look, there. The, no matter the size in the, of the economy of the program or the championship nature of it, the stuff is hard to contain. And they Alabama does not have a reputation of – they do it dirty. Whether they do or not, I don't know. But to me, the most impressive thing about the entire tenure is it, it all falls apart, Stugatz. You don't get to keep it. Reggie Bush, people start looking into your program on your USC. It's, and they're looking into Nick Saban's program. Well, Someone's looking to but, take him down, and yet no one has been able to do it, which is interesting. But, Sue, look at the, t- the, the coaches that have gone for Nick Saban and been successful. Chiswick, Urban Meyer, yep. Les Miles, mm-hmm. uh, Ed Orgeron. They've all had some of these things going on, and they don't have the longevity, yet Saban continues without that same kind of muck. 